All right. Hi-ya! This is Scott Pekarik with the Real Estate World Podcast coming to you live from the undisclosed location here over in Flyover Country. And boy, am I fired up today. Guys, I've got a super important announcement for you. But first, I want to say hi to our special guest, Jeremy Pekarik your garlic guy straight from uh where, where would you say you're from your mom's uterus jeremy <laughs> uh just north of flyover country just north of fly northeast maybe northeast a little bit uh um, well it's the uh the largest garlic patch in northern grand township benton county minnesota wow you're getting kind of specific that's, that's the tagline wow well you know, jeremy um jeremy has a hobby uh and, but i think it's more than just a hobby right it's a way of life like the you you are describe describe what you do, Jeremy. We we could call it tumor whispering with the garlic patch. Tumor whispering. Uh, please elaborate. What do you, what do you mean by that? Well, garlic specifically, black garlic is is actually toxic to cancer cells. So really. It uh, it has been my specialty for many years to to grow and and nurture many different cultivars of garlic for. Um, a, a, a time in history not could be today could be tomorrow could be, could be eight days from now well and you know this is this is relevant right now so i might as well get right to it uh for those of you that don't know uh and can't see me i am wearing a pink brain hat and the reason i'm wearing this hat is because i was recently diagnosed with a uh well brain tumor brain cancer i have a what's called a grade two glioma it's growing on the front the left frontal lobe of my head. And I have, uh, you know, I've known about this since uh, one day after the uh, Tom Ferry Success Summit in Anaheim. And I've taken a little bit of time, um, you know, for those of you who will be listening to the podcast in the future, I took about six, seven weeks, just kind of like absorb and, and meditate, if you will, on what was going on. And this past week, I decided to uh, go very public with it. We uh, created a, a website uh, or a, a YouTube channel. And Jeremy, what's the name of that? Tumor Tales. Tumor Tales. Yeah, Tumor Tales. And what I what I had done, and and I'm going to relate this to real estate here momentarily. But what I did uh, when I got when we finished the Tom Ferry Summit, you know, Tom talked about video, 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 about five thousand times. And what had happened was I got in this habit of doing video during the entire summit. So when I got sick at the pool, um, well, I'll back up. My family came out at, you know, the day after the summit, the day, you know, the Friday of it. We went to Laguna Beach. We uh, stayed at the Surf and Sand Hotel. And the, you know, the next day, which would have been Saturday, I went for a five, five mile run, came back to the pool, was hanging out with my twin five year olds, my wife, Jess, and my brother, Jesse. Um, see the symmetry there. And we, we were hanging out and suddenly I just got like really dizzy and like, like vertigo, like, you know, kind of, uh, kind of like crazy, crazy dizzy and not, not feeling at all right. So I went and laid down like an hour later, I'd be throwing up hotel staff comes up and they're like, Hey, do you want to, uh, do you want us to call the paramedics? And my first thought was like, hell no, because I didn't want my kids to see it. So Jesse helped me get up to the room. And I'm like, you know, the paramedics were there in like 30 seconds and they, you know, they got the EKG, EKG monitors on me and all this. And I'm like, Jesse, take, take video, take pictures. You know, Tom Ferry, Tom Ferry said, take pictures and video of everything. So I ended up getting in the ambulance. I got selfies of me and, and belted it in the, in the stretcher. Um, I got real time updates as I'm figuring out what's going on the whole time. I'm like, no idea, no clue. Um, and I just keep taking videos. So you see me getting little snippets of information on our YouTube channel. I uploaded those videos and finally to the point where I find out what I have. All right. And it's just like, Oh, mofo videos of the next day, me having time to like, you know, analyze what had happened. And, you know, there's a million things going through your head at this point, right? You're thinking, okay, this is the instrument of my destruction. Well, as it turns out, this is the instrument of my liberation because I have taken a, a, a kind of a hard ass approach to what it is that I'm facing and have uh, decided to own it 
and own it like I have a choice, right? But own it and, and, and use this as a tool of not just my liberation, but other people's liberation. You know, you, you uh, have a philosophy, like you, you, you start thinking about, you know, the afflictions that you have and things that um, are happening to you in life. And you have a choice. Like you really have a choice. You have a choice to say, you know what? I can curdle up in the fetal position. I can, you know, become a victim you know, of circumstance. I can treat myself like, you know, someone who can't make decisions and can't uh, go out and look for solutions. Or I can choose the opposite path where I can say, you know, I'm not a victim. I'm going to be the victor here. I'm someone who's not just going to uh, go, go through it. I'm going to grow through this. But more importantly, through my experience, I'm like, I'm going to share this with everybody. Everybody I can so they can understand what it is that happened to me. They can understand what I'm feeling. Because you know what? When people find out they have, you know, they, get can they have cancer, it kind of messes with your head a little bit. And I want to show people like, yeah, it's okay for it to mess with your head. It can, it's okay to not know what the hell to say to your wife. You know, it's okay to think, what the hell is this going to do to my business? It's okay to say, God, I don't know how to talk to my kids. I don't know how to do any of these things. Like I sure as hell didn't. Yeah. I just started making up as I, as I went along, Jeremy, you like, like you have something to say. Well, initially they, they misdiagnosed it. Well, right. So they, the initial uh, prognosis was pretty screwed up They're, They told my wife, and I, unbeknownst to me, so my, my initial reaction to the doctor, which showed me the mass of the tumor, I'm like, okay, like, that's cool. I'm like, uh, but I'm planning to leave here tomorrow, walking out of here, and I'm going to finish my vacation, and I'm going to deal with this when I get home. And she's like, well, you got to take this more seriously. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I am taking it seriously. I'm seriously going to have a really good time with my wife and kids, not to, you know, so they're not like freaked out. And I'm like, there's no, there's, I'm like, I, I'm like, there's no scenario I've looked at that tells me that freaking out is going to help. Not, no, 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 no possible scenario, no possible outcome where me freaking out and being emotional here and is going to help. I said, what I really want to do is I want to get some food because I haven't eaten all day and I'd like to uh, go to bed and get a good night's sleep. So that's what I did. I got a sandwich, some food, slept like a baby. And I knew like in the morning, because in life, you know, never do I make great decisions after 10 o'clock and it was 10 o'clock. So if I look at that, my track record, I'm like, put the gremlins to bed. Yeah. Put the damn gremlins to bed. Don't, don't, don't feed them and don't get them wet. Um, so anyway, so, but meanwhile, un, uh, unbeknownst to me, they tell my wife that, that, you know, I have a, a grade four glioblastoma, which is, you know, really, really bad. Um, I have a glioma. Okay, Jeremy, glioma. Um, glioma. Jeremy, Jeremy got me the whiteboard today. So the, um, so anyway, so they tell my wife that, well, finally, you know, next day, I have no idea that she's thinking I'm going to be dead. Oh, they basically told her I had three to 12 months. And the next day, the neurosurgeon comes in and he's like, well, no, no, we can, you know, just, you know, maybe check it every, you know, five, six months, you know, you could go 10 years without any problems. We don't really know. So I'm just like, in my, in meanwhile, Jess is like, thinking this other thing and she's like all relieved i'm like well what did you think happened and then she told me the story you know i'm like oh oh you thought daddy was dead okay uh, that's why you were asking about the life insurance policy <laughs> so you did not have a good night's sleep last night. <laughs> yeah yeah you did not and neither did my brother jesse who just you know serendipitously dipitously decided to stay and you know this goes back to where i don't believe in coincidence i believe that that you know things happen. Like there's an interconnectivity of things. And the fact that my brother Jesse ended up staying an extra day to hang out with us and then ended up staying another extra day to help watch the boys was, was you know, to me, like a, a, a true gift and like almost miraculous. The fact that can, uh, garlic has uh, known uh, anti-cancer qualities, you know, attacks them at the stem cells, et cetera. Um, you know, there's an enzyme and you know, I, I won't get into the technical of it because I want people's eyes to gloss over. And the fact that my brother happens to grow garlic, is that a coincidence? I, I think not. I think not. So anyhow, so yeah, so I've got this, you know, this, this glioma, you know, and I've had, you know, part of, of what I'm trying to do is one, you know, start this YouTube channel, right? And it's, you know, the idea here is to uh, draw people in and, and, and into my experience, and expose to people, you know, some different options for treatment. Now, I am not a doctor. 
I know I've used that line that I was in college a lot, but the, uh, the fact is I'm not a doctor and I can't give medical advice. All I can do is share my feel, my, my experience and what I'm trying and let's see what happens. That's all I'm trying to do. Look, there might be things you've never even thought of for treatment. There, there's things I haven't even thought of, I'm sure. And lots of people are making a lot of recommendations. And what, one thing you really be careful with is the noise that's out there, right? Like, cause you know, there's people who are just going to try to sell you stuff. That's basically not going to help you, right? It's snake oil. Uh, I, actually, uh, I do have snake juice with me because I have done the snake diet. If you don't know what that is, you just wait, check out my YouTube channel. So, so here's the deal. So I am on this mission to get people to start making healthier. Jeremy, is, it, is are you really that bored? You're yawning? I've been up since 3.30. You're working, I hope, right? That's right. All right, well, Jeremy does work for me now too. So I'm, a, I'm an evil overlord. Not only am I overlord of trolls, I'm also overlord of uh, all things good and kind in this world. Uh, yeah, no, good and kind, no things nasty and, and cruel, cruel. Um, but no, but the, 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 my goal here is to just expose people to like different options in treatment. Like, you know, we all know we can do chemo radiation, get a resection and, you know, surgical things, but there are other options out there. And I intend to try every damn one of them because I don't want to have the surgery. <clears throat> Why do I not want to have the surgery? Well, here's the deal. Specifically what got me looking for other options is, the, is this. Right here, you guys, on, I'm pointing to my uh, uh, left frontal lobe, if you guys are listening to this on the podcast. So my, where the tumor sits, it's like a four centimeter tumor. It's like a small fist. And it sits right near the, the area that basically controls speech. All right. If they do a full resection, there's a pretty good chance, if I, don't, if I can't shrink this naturally, there's a pretty good chance they're going to leave me kind of messed up in the speech area for a while. And I know you guys love listening to my voice. It is so smooth and calming. I don't. DJ voice, Scott. What's that? It's that late night FM DJ voice. Of course. That's why you guys tune in. Anyway. uh, Yeah. No, but, but you know, here's the problem. Like I told the doctor, like, if you're going to take my, you know, if I'm going to lose my ability to speak, you might as well kill me at the, on the table. So then that got me thinking about, okay, what else can I do here? Well, first thing is I cut out sugar. I cut out carbs because, um, you know, I don't want to make this all about cancer today, but it's, this is important. Um, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I, I decide I'm going to have a healthier lifestyle. So, so what did I do? I go on an eight-day fast. I, I get hooked up with the snake diet, and I'm like, okay, Cole Robinson's like, okay, we got to fast this. We got we to gotta get this glucose out of your system because the cancer cells love glucose. And what I worked on is getting myself into ketosis, starting this ketogenic diet, because cancer cells find it incredibly hard to process uh, ketones, which is what is the product of um, when your body goes into ketosis, you start burning fat. And I'm, very, I'm oversimplifying this, guys, because I, I don't want to get into this completely. That will be a different podcast and a different station. Check out my uh, YouTube channel. I have all kinds of, of details, you know, go out there, subscribe, uh, tell your friends. I go through uh, using K90 Wormer. I talk about the ketogenic diets in detail. I'll continue Good time for a book recommendation, Scott, uh, a book recommendation. So, uh, you know, just what? out of reach, just Can't out of reach it. Where's Dram? Oh yeah. The, see, this is where, you know, I got to be a little more prepared. But a book recommendation is Keto for Cancer, Miriam Kellinen. It's a great book. Uh, talks about um, you know starting a ketogenic diet and different metabolic approaches to trying to starve the cancer. All right, and that's what you're trying to do when you're trying to uh, deprive your body of glucose. Uh, there's a there's a woman who cured her cancer. She worked for Merck. There's a, a canine dewormer drug from work, from Merck that she tested on. Uh, mice that was apparently 100% effective. And then she got a grade four uh, glioblastoma and then she tried it on herself and cured her cancer. And there's a guy by the name of Joe Tippins out there who has a blog, My Cancer Story Rocks. Uh, and you can go out and see his blog and he talks about how, what he did. So, so what's with the, what's with canine dewormer that, that attacks your cancer cell? I have no idea. I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't get into the science of it. Um, 
I, I I've read the, oh, read you're the blog. Fixed with the taste right now. Well, yeah, I mean, I do have um, canine dewormer in my snake juice right now, but the cayenne pepper. Let me take a drink of this. Hold on. The uh, the cayenne pepper and the uh, lemon juice and and the um, apple cider vinegar with mother with the mother uh, does cut the taste. It's actually you, it, it's tasteless. I tried tasting it the other day, um, but it's a, it's funny what you'll be willing to do uh, when you're faced with the uh, again the instrument of your destruction. Like you know, people are like, well, I would never do that. Well, when you're there, let me know. I mean, and, you know, the big thing for me is you know defining my why. And my purpose and you know i have twin five-year-old boys i have a, a wife who you know mostly loves me and except when i'm being an ass but you know and, and they're, they're great that's that's why I, I need to live right i want to see my kids grow up i want to see you know other people's kids you know i want to see my brother jeremy grow up someday um but the the, the reality is is but but there's more to it than that you know the, the youtube channel the real reason there you go there you go uh there we go there they are. This is why we work, everybody. It's Scott's it's family work. on every PC. <laughs> <laughs> we never forget. But you know, but 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 even a, a, a you know, I have a, a a larger calling beyond that too, is to through this journey. Like again, why I'm inviting everybody in. I'm showing you what I'm trying, what I'm doing. Again, I'm not giving anybody medical advice, but I encourage everyone to take an active role in your health, to start making healthier lifestyle decisions to understand what it is that you're putting into your body. And I'm the number one offender. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not judging anyone. You know, I'm not, a, I mean, my hypocrisy knows no limits. Doc Holliday, Tombstone, great movie. But, you know, but I, I do encourage everyone, look at what you're, you know, look at what you're eating, learn about what you're eating. You know, there's a sugar addiction. There's a carbohydrate glucose addiction that a lot of people are suffering from. Look at intermittent fasting. Look at a ketogenic diet. Look at, you know, what, you can do take small steps, you know, every week or month or whatever to, to kind of change your mindset to how you, um, how food is in your life. You know, this idea that we got to be constantly grazing all day is kind of malarkey. Uh, you know, it's family friendly show, but you know, I was a grazer. My God, you know, if you look, I looked at my diet before, you know, I like beer a lot too. You know, God knows I had my share and then like 18 other people's share in my life. So, I don't know, Jeremy. What am I? What am I leaving out? I mean, I don't want to beat this to death, but I'm leaving I'm, already? No, no. Am I? What am I leaving out of the the, the cancer talk? Like, you know. Um. You know. I I think. Hold on one second. I'm pulling up this website because I have I have an ad. Um. But I I think, you know, a, a few of the things. Appreciate what you have, and and, um. Don't take life for granted. You know, every every morning you wake up have a purpose, have a why and, and, and fight for it every day. Um, if you have a job you don't like, quit, go find something that you like to do. Uh, you know, if you don't like the people that you're hanging out with, go find some better people, take advantage of what you have because you, you might run into a time where, uh, you know, you've got a, a 10 year life sentence. So if I you agree back at the last 40 years and you regret it. Well, uh, you better stop regretting your life that you have. Yeah, why don't you go out and write your obituary today and, and and see what's in it? Like if if someone had to write your obituary, and and say what kind of life you lived, if you start writing that and you start crying by the time you get to the second paragraph because you have so many regrets, stop writing your obituary and then start writing down the things you want to change about your life and who you want to be. Like there's a trip. I I remember I was getting a haircut two three months ago and we were talking about oh yeah we're talking about going to california my daughter and i and we just you know we can't go to california and i'm like what the hell like it's like you can figure out like by, by skipping a, a coffee a week i'm like i told her or was it was her daughter and her fiance and her fiance said no or whatever i'm like I'm like well number one ditch that bum i mean it's you know it's a couple grand you know fly out and get a hotel a decent hotel i'm like and, and go book the tickets today like and figure it out like I mean, that, that's your dream. What, what the hell is stopping you from achieving that? And then what about gratitude? Like, like I have a gratitude focus. I, every single day now I'm just, I just have gratitude that for the fact that look, my I, don't think, I think of the people whose lives were ex extinguished in a moment, right? Like, and I, and I talk about this a lot in, 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 on the YouTube channel, but like I've been given the gift of life to like how, however many days I have, 
until I'm gone. I've, I, I've had to actually face the end. And it's like, how the hell can I not be, you know, have gratitude for every minute that I have left? You know, who knows how long that's going to be, you know, whether, you know, like I said, it's gonna be a great story. If I cure this thing, you know, you know, metabolically through nutrition and, and canine dewormer, and I'm not drinking my own pee yet, but, um, and garlic and garlic, garlic. Yeah. Most importantly, garlic, your garlic guy, I mean, your garlic guy at your garlic guy on Instagram. Right. Yeah. Hey, what's, what's the Facebook? It's a, at your garlic guy at your garlic guy at your garlic um, guy. But you know, I, I will say this. We're um, trying, we're putting together a team to run this uh, five. Well, some people will be running it. I'll probably not be. I'll be jogging. Uh, it's the breakthrough for brain tumor 5k. That's going to be in St. Paul next Saturday morning. I believe it's at eight, eight o'clock, nine o'clock AM. So um, late enough for everybody to make it, but that website is abta.org forward slash get dash involved forward slash bt 5k forward slash. So if you like to spend some time with Scott, uh, you can you can join in. Go to that website. Well, don't tell them I'm going to be there. They might not, then they're not going to show up. If you like to spend some time with your garlic guy, you could definitely. There you go. <laughs> there will be several hats that you can wear to to partake, and maybe I'll even bring some garlic braids. But you can go to that website. the The first light blue box on the left says Twin Cities Saturday, October twelfth. You can click on that button there. If you can't make it to the run. You can certainly make a donation to Team Tumor Tales. Click that big, bright orange button that says donate, or you could register and sign up to be a part of our team. If you sign awesome. up, please let me or Scott know. We'll get you a t-shirt, a Tumor Tales t-shirt, which looks awesome, designed by Aaron Fruit. Awesome. That is a great, that is a great commercial. That was my sexy FM radio. I, I love it. Um, and, you know, keep in mind too, you, you know, this is going to be published on our podcast, uh, the real estate world podcast. And I know it's not uh, a lot of real estate so far today, but you go in and subscribe to that. There is good red meat uh, in, in our, in our podcast. Um, you know, we, uh, we bring the fire every single week guaranteed. Yeah. The, so the, the, the another thing I want to just throw a plug in St. Jude's um, um, charity I wanted uh, sponsored on my birthday. Thank you everyone who's donated so far. I think we've raised almost three thousand dollars. I'm going to put in fifteen hundred dollars myself. Uh, again, you know, you think about you have it bad. Well, okay, it, I'm going to go present a check to St. Jude's um, for just the fifteen hundred dollar part on top of what's getting sent to them uh, for. Um, uh, through Facebook. So anybody who still wants to donate even five bucks, like five bucks, it's, it's a latte, you know, and, and just, you know, please. I, mean, I know everyone asks you for money all the time, people, I get it, but um, I'm only going to ask you like 500,000 more times. I promise. So anyway, the, uh, what, well, and you know, if you, if you figure out when you're going, that would be an awesome time for people to just come with you and show their support. I think uh, right. kids, patients at the, at the hospital would appreciate anybody just showing up and, and, bringing in some balloons, bringing in some laughs and, and lightening up the mood. Right. And I think, I think that for us, you know, I'm looking at making like more of a commitment to, um, you know, doing, you know, a more, you know, regular visit. Um, I know that like, there's some things you have to do with scheduling and stuff that I'm working out, but, uh, but anyway, I, I, I just really appreciate everyone who's uh, shown their support, you know, monetarily also uh, people have just uh, spiritually and um, sent nice, really nice, kind words to me. I, trying to respond to everybody as time allows. I have some voicemails that have been sitting there for a couple of days and I want to get back to those too. I'm mean, just, um, just I'm, I'm doing the best I can and it's sometimes a, uh, a slow process. So with that, uh, Jeremy, um, any updates from the land of the trolls? I, I don't feel like I've been trolled much lately since the, uh, Oh, Hey, we got a special oh, guest. Oh my God. Yeah. Checking in from Phoenix, Arizona, Jesse Picaric. Speaking of trolls, it's your mini horse guy. Speaking of trolls. Now, Jesse, you were, um, you, oh, shit, you're, you're, you're he's muted. That's awesome. Um, I'll unmute you quick. Uh, Jesse, um, this is actually a great segue, um, disruptor segment. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. All right. Uh, can you hear us, Jesse? I, I can't. Sorry, I just got done doing a testimonial video with Garrett, and I've just just got my car. So. I'm All right. Well, don't don't crash. Minnesota driving I'm, while zooming. 
I am not driving. I am not driving. Somebody called the the the, the uh, highway patrol. Anyway, Jesse, uh, your your name came up a couple weeks ago. Um, we were talking in our disruptor segment, and you know just kind of how bitter you were about a certain disruptor. I mean, it, it was like. Uh, Jer Jer Jeremy, can you pull out the proverbial um, couch here so we can uh, help uh, exercise uh, maybe some demons with Jesse Picaric from Phoenix, Arizona, not flyover country, but you had a transaction with a company called what, OfferPad? It was OfferPad. And they're not here in flyover country yet. Open Door is. And oh, by the way, my Open Door deal, I don't know if I talked about it, but that thing blew up. There's bits what happened? You mentioned it. Uh, Oh, God, you know, it just they said, oh, there's too much work to do like uh, some ridiculous. They're not going to have time to do all the work. It was just just a dumb like way to end it. It just ended with a whimper. And I I, I was always suspicious that it would. And and just I don't know. I just don't like how it ended. Just like the bad taste in my mouth. But whatever. Be that as it may. Um, it's not cancer. Uh -huh. But Jesse, uh, talk about offer pack because you were bitter. And it, well, it, it, it was the whole the, the whole thing was look, real estate does not need to be complicated. It doesn't it doesn't have to be. And what I got I got so upset. We were actually in Laguna Beach. Um, I'm trying to spend some time with you guys, with you, your wife, and, the, and my nephews, your twins. But what happened was I did a final walkthrough on Sunday. We were set to close on Friday, and I did a final walkthrough on Sunday. We uh, they agreed to do some repairs in the garage you know, rewire to fix it, blah, blah, blah. Well, they, they cut some holes in the drywall. I was like, hey, guys, I told them Sunday, you, you left a couple holes gaping open. Can you just patch them? And notified them, sent them the final walkthrough form. I, I, I believe it. I notified them, like, okay, we'll get our get our guys on it. I followed up Monday or Tuesday and said, hey, guys, what's the status? Just want to make sure we're close on Friday. Uh, do you have it on the schedule? Uh, we're still waiting to hear from this person, this person follow up on Wednesday. Oh, we're still waiting for this person. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, my husband, Brian, was going to do the final walkthrough Thursday at 5 p.m. Hey, guys, do you have it done yet? Well, we're still trying to reach this. So finally, I'm getting so freaking annoyed. I call them up. Or first of all, I had to go through a goose chase to find a phone number to, to actually talk to someone. There's no phone. Gosh, to you're, getting, you're bitter now just talking about it. It was like it a was, month ago. It was, it was so pointless. And, and then finally, I get a hold of a lady. And she's like, well, you know, I'm trying to reach this person, the supervisor to reach that person. I can't figure out this person. So guess what? We're going to hold up your, we're going to hold up closing because we don't close until all the repairs are done. And like, what? I'm like, so you're going to, so you were notified five days ago of a simple repair to be done. And you can't get a hold of someone to get the repairs done. You don't even know the status of it. And then now you're going to hold my client hostage that they're willing to close because it's drywall. But I said, imagine if my client was in a moving truck right now and their lease was up on their apartment today and we're closing tomorrow. And now you're going to hold them up in a U-Haul that they may have to rent another place to incur expenses to pay for a U-Haul for over a weekend because you can't get a simple repair done of drywall patching. I said, imagine that to be the truth. And I told them, I said, what if it is the truth? And I'm like, what is your, I said, what, this is not the only option. I said, here are some other options. You let them close. And, uh, and, and then I, I called the title company after, after the title company's notary talked smack about me, about how I was responsible, how, oh, you should be talking to your agent about this. Cause I couldn't be there. I'm in California. And I'm like, so I let, I let loose in the title company. I'm like, are you kidding me? These are your people that are representing you. Uh, but anyway, back to the, back to offer pad. I'm like, no, I said, here's what you can do. You can have a thousand dollars held up in escrow or pick a number that's appropriate. And I said, you guys get a week to fix this. I already gave you a notice five days ago and you can't get it done. I said, I'll, you take a week to fix it. If you can't get it done, you release a thousand dollars to the buyer. Done. Yeah, Jesse, Jesse, uh, can, did you pull your car over? Uh, we're, we're, I, a little, I, uh, we're a little nervous right now. I was pissed. I, I'm do, sorry. Do, I'm like I tell them. Do you have a do you have a caregiver that's nearby? Because I'm I'm might be seeing like a, a heart attack or a, a, yeah. I was so upset because I'm like, guys, I said, I said, I am not I'm not your enemy. I said, I refer I refer to your businesses. I said I I feel we just got out of all these we just got out of Tom Ferry Summit. And I truly told him, I said, I'm your advocate of working with you. I refer business to you 
and or open door. And I, I put that in my business model. I said, I am not, I am not your enemy, but I'm like, you have to really look at your system right now, because if we have to go through all this crap and now you want to hold my client hostage, I said, this is your reputation, not mine. And I said, the truth will come out. But I said, if we have to go through all this crap, your, ma- your model is flawed. It sounds, like, it sounds like you needed Chris Voss. You had a hostage situation yeah. there. It was. It was so <laughs> crazy. It was so unnecessarily complicated, so unnecessarily stressful. And I, and I told the title company, I said, look. I'm stressed just hearing about it right now. It's I was so pissed my... because it was taking time away from me with my nephews and you and Jess. I'm like, here we are. I'm wasting my time. You're wasting your time. Title company's getting their time wasted because you can't fix two freaking drywall holes. Really? Uh, yeah. We need so, to give credit to that the violin music. That was actually not the world's smallest violin. That was uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Crab's smallest violin hardcore remix. That's, uh, that's I love earlier. it. I love it. So anyway, so it closed, right? It it did close. It did close that day. Um, they did get the drywall repairs. Oh, it was also funny because the title company said that the offer pad was communicating with the title company to give them updates, and they were and they were not communicating with me. Uh, I'm like, I call the title company. I'm like, how do you know this stuff? I'm like, I am trying to get answers from them, and they won't. They're not getting back to me. What the hell is going on? And I and then I and I felt bad for the title company. I said, look. I get how this whole thing works. You guys get put your back against the wall to close these deals. And I said, well, they won't, they won't release seller signed documents until the repairs are done. So I'm like, I guess I said, you guys have documents. Well, we do have documents if the repairs aren't done. I'm like, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta rein you in here and in interest of time. Like, you know, all the, we just dropped half our viewers here. Cause they're like watching this guy, like have a nervous. Feisty. Feisty. You- so, so here's the deal. Oh, are we live? We're live. Yeah. Right? We're very live. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, this will be this Hi, is gonna, guys. This is gonna be, on the, uh, it's gonna be on the. It's gonna be on the happy hook. I need some. I need to go home and get some horse therapy. Yeah, but anyway, I think you should. You're the, you're gonna be the number one uh, client of your own nonprofit right now. Holy cow! Um, <laughs> epic. So anyway, so off. I'm you know, not fan of offer pad. Open door. You, you've had better experiences with. I just closed a transaction um, this week. Uh, and and, and those of you are not familiar, offer pad, open door, they're I buyers. You know, they buy like institutional buyers. They buy houses. Sometimes they fix them up to resell. Uh, I think they that's kind of their model. Always sometimes do they rent ever? Are you aware of? I, I don't know. No. To be honest, I, I, don't. I don't see any rentals of theirs. No. Uh, we, we featured, Um, I think we featured Feature. open door uh, in episode two, maybe. I don't know. I've been talking about them open door on like pretty much everyone because I had that transaction that was I was in the middle of, um, you know, so the, anyway, disruptor offer pad. They may or not, may not be in the Twin Cities uh, market, but I know they are in a lot of markets uh, throughout the country. Um, you know, probably uh, we got we got a raving fan, uh, a super fan, Jesse Picard. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, just- I, I, I just closed one with open door this week. I, I, I think it was my third or fourth one with open door. And aside from one transaction, I've had I've had great experiences with Open Door, and this last one being the most recent, a great experience, really really good. So my my Open Door, good, good job. Well, you know, just real quick, I want to mention an, another. Um, uh, I guess well, maybe we won't go there yet, but um, I think we'll just do. Uh, you know, Jesse, I appreciate you coming on. I I'm, we're going to welcome you to stay on. Uh, oh, offer pad, uh, not a ringing endorsement. Um, nope. Jeremy, I, I don't know if you've got any, um, any care to, uh, uh, bring up any of the stats on, on offer pad, but, uh, you know, they really, they, 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 you know, they're, they're, they're not in this market. I don't you know like they're probably, I think in, I don't know, a dozen or more off, um, markets in the, the, the greater world or whatever the United States. So um, I, I think we, I think we can move off them. I mean, that's, I, I don't, uh, I don't see a lot. I, I, I these I buyers, I, I do want add one thing. I think we're going to see some consolidation of a lot of them. I know there were some, some um, I buyer models that were around two, three years ago. And some of those companies have, you know, have consolidated or changed their business model. Uh, real estate wars. I, uh, you know, gosh, you know, I, I, uh, there's another one here uh, with with Compass, and I just you know it, it's I think we just segue into it. You know, it's uh, again one of my favorite uh, favorite topics. But 
Now there's a fight. There's a guy uh, by the name of Avi Dorfman. And again, in flyover country, we don't have a lot of compass uh, talk. But, you know, this guy was uh, claimed he was instrumental in the founding of a high profile brokerage compass. And he's suing him for two hundred million dollars. And it's just I, I just feel like you know, compass has gotten, you know, it's valued at six point four billion dollars. I think they've got 11 or 12,000 agents. They've got, they've raised more than like, you know, over a billion dollars from, um, from uh, the Japanese investment investment firm, SoftBank, uh, who also uh, owns um, uh, WeWork. And it's just, uh, it's just crazy. I think Realogy Sue and Compass, uh, Zillow and Compass just uh, settled a, uh, you know, out of, uh, out of court for, you know, a bunch of money. Uh, for you know one side poaching the other's people so it's it, it this is just interesting to me because there's there's so much money floating around in these big real estate firms there's this this uh this this space race if you will to try to try to gain market share and and what's ironic is a lot of these companies they don't make any money it's it's the the affiliated businesses that are making all the money or they're making their money on the technology fees uh, because, you know, in, in real estate right now, you know, the models have shifted so much in favor of the real estate agent. I mean, you know, my own brokerage, you know, we'll do 100% plans with agents and monthly fees and transaction fees and stuff like that. So, I mean, I get it firsthand. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not a, a hugely popular line of business to be in as the broker, you know, especially when you start considering all your expenses and your li- potential liabilities if agents go out and start making a lot of mistakes and stuff. So uh, it's just interesting to me to watch this, you know, cause you know, compass having the, the valuation of $6.4 billion. Meanwhile, you've got a company like uh, Realogy who's got like tons of brands, hundred thousand agents plus I believe worldwide. And I think, I, I don't know what their market cap is today, but I, I think it was valued around 500 million or something. So you don't call me on that figure. I haven't you know checked the, the, the value as of today. And I, you know, I, I keep asking myself and anybody else who's around me, what's going to happen, you know, when we have a, a correction in this market, because, you know, again, people ask me all the time, well, it's the market peaked. I would, I would argue we're, we're, we're either peaked or plateaued right now. Um, you know, what happens if, you know, you know, what's keeping us going are low interest rates. What happens when rates go up a point you know, and, and I keep saying that for years, but it hasn't happened yet. Like Jesse, do you have any thoughts, insights on that? Like, oh, you're quiet. Did you get muted? You got muted. Hold on. Yeah, you got muted. Hold on. We we wanted. We didn't. We definitely wanted to mute you. Uh, uh, I just I just switched screens. It says very bitter about offer pad. Yeah, uh, that's you. Um, I'm over it. I'm over it. But you. Okay, you, I'll you, change you, it. You, you picked that scam. Um, I thought a heel though. No, I, you know, I don't know. It's, I mean, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure how your market is up there, but, you know, I, I think we might see a, a little correction in Phoenix of, of values. You know, I was just having a conversation with someone about this this week, you know, but I don't think with our market, with us being, you know, the number one county in the country of people moving here with all the expansion, all the development going on with, I think it, God, what did I read about Arizona being the number one, uh, I, I can't remember all the stats, but anyway, just a, a huge influx of people daily here. So I think our demand is going to stay strong. Our inventory is like the lowest it's been for God since 2000. What was it? Two, I can't remember over a decade. I mean, our, our inventory is so low. So I think our demand is going to continue to keep us, to keep us uh, steady and strong, but I do still think we'll have a little correction, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be that, noticeable yeah and i you you know you you always feel like the outlying areas get hit first right and then like you know these metropolitan markets i don't think we're gonna see anything like 2008 you know i i I believe it's a a natural market cycle for there be you know small corrections and you know a lot of times the longer you go the the more severe the corrections are i mean i've seen a lot of loans that uh that are uh starting you know a lot of loan programs that sure look like subprime to me again you know we had that whole fiasco so you start seeing you know zero down you know no income very no credit check yeah no credit check Boy, okay uh, that one that one scares me you no know, that- credit check you know yeah. the whole the whole zero down doesn't bother me as much because our rents have gotten up so high around here that it's like well if you've got a little bit for savings of reserves and want to keep it in reserves versus zero down okay when rents are out of control here but it's 
actually probably appropriate for the area. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Nobody can predict. I mean, but I, I just, you know, I just, I you know, tell, I tell investors all the time, like, well, you know, now is probably the time to sell. I mean, if you're, if you're thinking about selling next two years, sell now, you know, people are like, well, should I buy? I'm like, well, it really depends on the deal and depends on your, your situation too. Like you're buying a house to live in. Well, think about, you know, you know, I, I, I the question I, I get a lot is, well, does, uh, you know, am I going to make money on this? I'm like, well, are you buying a, if you're buying a property to make money, buy an investment property, buy a multi-unit, if you're buying a property to live, I mean, yeah, over time, I mean, you, if you live there long enough, you'll pay it off and, and it'll appreciate, but you know, in the short run, who knows, you know, if it's two years from now, I don't know. Like, um, the, you know, no one could predict that, but you know, when I've always had to maintain, look, you have two houses, one's 300,000, one's 320. The one for 320 is like, you can hit 19 of the 20 things you want. The one for 300, you can hit 14. You buy the one for 320 because you're going to have a higher quality of life. And it's, and it's really hard to, to quantify that, right? Like, like if I'm happier living in a house, uh, that makes me better in all areas of my life, right? So that's an investment in, in my happiness and my you know, wife's happiness and my kid's happiness. Like, and that propels you in life, right? So if you're having a better quality of life, well, yeah, it's a great investment. It's a great investment. You, you, you it's probably going to produce more in your business. Right. And that's, and, and that's what you got to think. Like someone just wants a deal, you know, they want the cheapest, cheapest house they can get and the cheap, you know, like going oh, on cheapest house, go buy a house with wheels, buy a trailer house. But you know, like, you know, like, you know, you can back your truck up and move anytime you want, but the, you know, the, but the, and I'm not making fun of people in trailer houses or maybe it is, I don't know. Um, but you know, buy one. I, I grew up in a trailer. We grew up first uh, six years of my life was in, in a trailer house. So that right. might explain a few things. I mentioned we were very poor growing up yet. Have I mentioned that to anybody? Uh, here, comes, here comes the world's smallest violin again. Yeah. Well, you know, we were on a lot of government programs growing up and we grew up in a trailer house. So probably, uh, probably how I got the tumor, but you know, like, you know, some people, they want that, you know, at the cheapest commission, they want the cheapest, this, the cheapest, that. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, like, I'm not saying you should, you know, pay more than, than, than what is, you know, reasonable, but come on, you know, you got to live there. Like, um, you know, I happen to love my house, right. Because I've made it a home. And I don't know if I'm going to make money. I'm probably not like, I don't care. Like I love living there. It makes me, makes me happy. It makes my wife happy. It makes my kids happy. Like what the hell, why do I, if I, why do I care if I spend an extra 10 or $20,000 over you know 30 years? Happy until you play basketball with me there. I don't think you guys have ever beat me. I don't my, think you've ever beaten me on home, home court. Anyway. Um, so anyway, so that's, you know, I don't know how we got it. We got in the weeds here off the compass thing, but you know, I just, you know, I just see all this money, like the, the compass thing, you know, not a great real estate wars segment today because I, you know, I didn't really get into it because I don't really care who wins that lawsuit, to be honest. Um, but I just think what's fascinating about it is just the, the amount of money compass has raised the market capitalization that they have based on other more established companies. And, you know, I know people can say, well, they have a better business model, blah, 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 blah. Fine, fine, whatever. It's just, to me, it seems a little disproportionate right now. And then just all like the lawsuits they're in, like what, like, you know, why are people, why are it, what is everybody's pump right now? Um, I just want to back up, just, you know, and take a segue. Number one, gratitude to everybody who's um, listens to our podcast, all our clients of our, you know, property management company, which is doing awesome, our real estate brokerage, which is doing awesome. Um, the people who have been supportive uh, with, you know, realizing that, you know, I've got the brain tumor. Uh, you know, again, please go out to uh, Tumor Tales on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to it. I'm getting doing daily updates on like different treatments that I'm doing and different things I've learned. I'm going to talk about, you know, ketogenic diets, dirty keto, clean keto. I'm actually going to show you how to use a, you know, take your blood, a blood glucose test. I, may, I might do that one tonight um, live on YouTube and uh, a ketone test, you know, a little $50 monitor that I bought. It's actually kind of cool. And then, you know, we're going to, we're going to talk about, you know, different kinds of fasting, you know, real easy fasts, um, you know, longer term fast, dry fast, all kinds of topics. How do you deal with, talk to kids about cancer? I did that um, today. Uh, just everything. Like, what do you know? What do you do about insurance? You know, you should buy life insurance now, guys. If you don't, you know, I'm going to bring on somebody in the insurance, you know, the, the financial planning and talk about that. I might bring that same person on this show. And we're going to talk about real estate in terms of like, how do you hedge against real estate, you know, investments and stuff? Cause I'm heavily leveraging real estate and I'm also in the markets too. So uh, lots of great topics. Uh, again, I appreciate everyone. Appreciate all the donations. St. Jude's Jeremy. I appreciate you for coming on. 
Uh, Jesse, appreciate you for gracing us with that epic rant. It was so good. Oh, I can't believe I was not. Oh my God. Yeah, uh, yeah, you got set up and you you needed it. And then Andy uh, Dram, who's on debate. camera today, our you know, our producer. Uh, he has uh, made this possible. Thank you guys for staying late on a Friday. Um, we got we got one more ad though. Uh, since the beginning of this week, our 5K participation has improved by 50. percent So we've wow. we've had uh, quite a few more members planning on joining us for next Saturday's run. That's Saturday, October 12th in St. Paul, the breakthrough for Brain Tumor 5K. Um, love to see you all there. I plan on running very fast and setting some world records. And I hope that you could come and join and, and watch me do that and also support Scott. Yeah, pre so, in. pre um, in. Get, get and, then, pre. and then really quick, uh, I briefly was talking to Scott earlier, but obviously I'm not going to be able to make it to Minneapolis, but uh, I've got a polo clinic I'm doing at nine, but I just realized Nine o'clock your time is seven o'clock my my time. So I'm inviting anyone who wants to join me for my own 5K in front of my house or wants to support Tumor Tales team. Uh, we're gonna do it at seven o'clock, which will be the same time, and maybe we can do a Facebook Live and uh, do a 5K. We, we will do a Facebook Live, no question about it. it. Might be an epic failure, but we're gonna do it anyhow. I love sure. it. I love it. Thank you, Jesse. And you know, everyone, like you know, we're, we really want to, you know try to build awareness, not just for brain cancer, but for all cancers. I will be wearing this pink hat running races. Uh, we were doing the Turkey trot in Phoenix. We're, uh, we're taking the caravan down to Phoenix uh, to see Jesse. We'll all be running the lifetime, uh, whatever they call it, the Turkey day, 5k or whatever, Turkey day, Turkey trot, Turkey trot. And we'll all be wearing the pink brain hats. I'm getting one for everyone. Uh, I'll try to bring extras uh, next Saturday. I ordered a bunch of them. And you know, this is like, you know, if nothing else, you guys, um, check out the kids, St. Jude's, um, Children's Miracle Network. These are all like truly worthy causes. They're awesome causes. I will be supporting the hell out of these causes. Uh, and I'm going to be, I'm going to swear now, shut your volume off. You don't hate it. I'm going to be fighting this like a motherfucker over the next fucking however long it takes to beat this son of a bitch. So, and I'm going to do it not just for me. I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for my, my brothers who are on the call today uh, and everybody else out there who's suffering from the same affliction. Um, or a similar affliction. I don't care. Maybe it's diabetes. Maybe it's whatever the hell it is. And and, and building awareness for uh, some you know some uh, adaptive therapies, alternate therapies, you know other ways you know that you can help create a healthier lifestyle through nutrition. And that's uh, something a cause that's very important to me. And trust me, I was the biggest shithead when it came to uh, you know poor life choices. Like I was the poster boy. If you said, hey, what's the wrong way to do it? For a lot of my life, that was me. And I know, so I'm not going to judge anybody about your choices, but I am going to encourage you to, to try to make better choices. And through my YouTube channel, the podcast, uh, we'll be starting another podcast. We're talking about lifestyle choices and stuff. I'll be demoing products that I feel, um, you know, using natural ingredients, uh, foods. And, you know, I'm not a hypocrite. Like I know I was a complete, you know, shit bag when it came to a lot of uh, poor decisions, you know, drugs, alcohol, whatever you want, you name it. I, I can vouch for that. <laughs> and you know what i know i don't have regrets i'm not i'm not feeling sorry myself or feeling bad about it but i mean what i'm saying is i'm, I'm not judging anybody so uh but i am going to try to help you get you know get healthy if you want to so i want to say one thing really quick because you mentioned saint jude's and i'm going to shout this out on every airway that i get an opportunity to do it but if anyone out there knows um obviously you guys know my therapy horse is happy hooves I'm trying to get into Phoenix Children's Hospital to visit the kids who are fighting cancer, fighting whatever disease for their lives. So getting in these hospitals is not easy. So if anyone has any contacts at Phoenix Children's or the Mayo, those are the two hospitals that are, I, I, I used to work at the Mayo, but uh, those two hospitals, I want to get in there so I can do more therapy work, especially for these kids, because those kids are just, oh my God, it just breaks my heart. Um, so anyway, that's my testimony. That's my reach out for anyone who's got contacts there. I am doing therapy tomorrow morning at Bethesda for assisted living uh, people, but I want to get to see those kids. Awesome. Yeah. Jesse, you got a great, a great cause that you're, uh, you're uh, created down there. A great uh, organization that you have and uh, it's, it's, it's commendable and, and, and I love you for it, man. I appreciate, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. I can't wait to see you. I could see you a couple of times uh, in the next six weeks, Jeremy. And a link to that uh, to Jesse's YouTube channel, Happy Hooves will be in the description as well as Tumor Tales and our 5K race next week. Awesome. Nice. 
Well, you so, know, I, uh, one quick question for Jeremy on the 5K thing. So if people want to make a donation, I, I just put that link on there for, was it brain, I, the link for brain, brain, uh, and then they just type in our, our team name, Tumor Jails. Jeremy could put, can you put the, um, put, he'll put it in the notes in the comment section. Okay. Or, or in the in yeah, it's a breakthrough in the, through breakthrough for brain tumors 5k it's a tumor tales so uh the link that i posted there should be a, a register on the left hand side and a donate button on the right so um should be and keep in mind whenever you're whenever you're going to listen to this um the podcast or if you watch this you know three months from now you can still donate like these are just events we have coming up soon we're going to keep doing them i like i said i've committed that i will run a 5k every month uh, somewhere, even in December, January, February, March in Minnesota, when it is not very nice, I'm going to run it. I'm going to be wearing the pink hat and I'm going to try to, you know, build awareness again. It's, you know, brain cancer specifically, it's, it's one of the more rare cancers. Doesn't get a ton of attention like some of the others do, but uh, that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a supporter of all, you know, everyone with cancer or even in other chronic illnesses. So um, with that, I just want to, you know, you know, we, we, we just want to recap, you know, last week we talked about, you know, Amazon turnkey, you know, go back, check, uh, check that one. We did the belly of the beast a couple of weeks prior, um, you know, and, and, you know, we, I think this is our seventh podcast. This will be uploaded on to um, uh, Libsyn and syndicated here, you know, over the weekend for people who, um, who aren't watching this live, you know, check out our podcast, uh, check out our, um, our, our charities, uh, check out the YouTube channel, Tumor Tales, uh, Jesse's uh, Happy Hooves. And of course, you know, if you want to support, um, you know, a property management company, real estate company, you know, check out Verde Property Management. We just rebranded that. With that, we are going to sign off. I want to get home. These guys, uh, Jesse is God knows where right now, probably like driving off a bridge. Uh, but that's okay. Just just take take video while you're doing it. Uh, at, least I, at least I didn't drive my white van because I'd, I'd have some neighbors looking at me with some some very suspicious yeah. uh, sitting in front of their uh, houses. All right. Are your windows blacked out, Jesse? Hey, hey, they are not. Oh, they my are. God. The bring of the lambs. Uh, anyway, so uh, with that, guys, thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, I know we went long today, but that's what we do. For nothing else, we're long. Uh, like with that, says, um, it's not just the tip. I think we you might didn't put, come uh, for just the tip. Real quick. You came for the whole damn thing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't give you the shaft. But the um the uh, we're gonna put Alex interview on from Tom Ferry after this. I think we uh we want to do that. And then next week, uh, I'm bringing the fire. Uh, I am absolutely. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We're not talking. We're not gonna talk much cancer next week. Next week, I've got a special disruptor. I've got an awesome real estate wars segment. I am. I'm bringing the heat. I mean, I'm just telling you. I've. I've. I'm. I'm fired up. I. I've got so much like aggression like this just just ready to boil over next week so you talk yeah. about prospecting next week yeah my favorite topic subjects for the the real estate yeah this is gonna be red there. meat for those uh for those professionals real estate professionals sales professionals or just people who are trying to be better in life so make sure you tune in next week thank you everyone for this week andy jeremy jesse i am scott picard this is the real estate world podcast love you all and we're out of here love you See ya, Jared. Bye. See ya. See ya.